been living in Windows for over 20 years. My muscle memory, the shortcuts, the folder paths, the little hacks, all of it felt like home. But curiosity kept nagging. Everyone online kept talking about Linux's stability, control, and how it can breathe new life into older hardware. So I picked Debian, the reliably boring option everyone sneers at and then secretly trusts, and committed. 30 full days with no Windows fallback. This is what happened. The decision felt part dare, part experiment. Debian appealed because it's conservative by design. Releases are carefully tested before they go stable, and long-term support is baked into the life cycle. In other words, it trades instant shiny features for a system that just keeps working without surprises. Day one surprised me. The installer is far friendlier than I expected. Straightforward partitions and a clean, guided setup. But the first hour felt like learning a new accent. Choosing a desktop environment felt like choosing a personality. I tried GNOME first for its clean, out-of-the-box approach. It felt alien compared to Windows, but uncluttered. KDE was immediately comfortable for anyone who likes to tweak everything. XFCE was a breath of fresh air on older machines. The good news? Switching to DE is simple and low risk, so you can experiment without reinstalling. Software hunting wasn't the headache I'd imagined. Chrome, VLC, and LibreOffice all exist. Many Windows staples have native Linux builds or perfectly good alternatives. Where packages weren't obvious, Debian's package tools made installing straightforward. APT the package manager handles downloading, installing, and updating with a few commands. And once you learn the basics, managing software becomes faster and less mysterious than on Windows. I still kept a little cheat sheet for APT update, APT upgrade, and how to search packages. But after a week, those commands felt natural. The terminal baptism is real. At first, the shell felt like a superpower people had, and I didn't. But the arc from confused to confident happened faster than I feared. Basic maintenance and troubleshooting, updating repos, installing packages, reading logs often required the terminal, but most desktop tasks didn't. Learning a handful of commands dramatically reduced my anxiety and made me feel like I understood what my system was doing. Peripherals were the first time Debian reminded me I wasn't in Windows anymore. Printers, certain webcams, and some proprietary wireless adapters needed a little extra work. That said, modern Linux printing centers around cups and the open printing ecosystem. For many printers, it's plug and play, and for others, a driver package from the repositories or a quick install of vendor tools resolves things. It was annoying at times, but it was also a good reminder that Linux exposes more of the stack, which is both empowering and occasionally fiddly. Gaming was another big question mark. I had heard about Proton and Valve's push for better Linux compatibility, and I was pleasantly surprised. A good chunk of my Steam library ran smoothly under Proton, and ProtonDB became my go-to before buying or trying a game. Some titles required tweaks or a specific Proton version, and anti-cheat systems remain a pain point for online competitive games. But for single-player and many AAA titles, the experience was far better than I expected. If gaming is your main workflow, you should test your must-play titles first, but the progress here is real. Performance and day-to-day -day responsiveness were where Debian shone on my older laptop. Boot times felt snappier, background memory usage was leaner, and simple multitasking had a smoother feel. Part of that was choosing a lighter DE, and part of it was the general lack of bundled bloatware that often comes with Windows machines. My daily productivity apps behaved predictably, and the system rarely demand attention for random updates or restarts. Security and control are not glamorous things to talk about on camera, but after a month, they mattered. Debian's conservative package policy and the fact that I could inspect or avoid software easily made me feel more in control of my data and system state. Combined with templates for backups and simple permission awareness, I felt safer. Not because Linux is magic, but because I understood it more. There were low points. I miss some Windows-only apps that I rely on for work. Usually there are wine hacks, web alternatives, or VMs, but none are perfect replacements. 
micro annoyances like setting up color calibration, certain vendor firmware blobs, or getting a complex audio interface to behave took time and patience. If you rely on a very specific pro app that has no Linux equivalent, the transition may be a non-starter without a dual boot or VM plan. So, was it worth it? After 30 days, I felt more productive on general tasks and oddly liberated by the system's predictability. My older hardware felt young again, and I had a much better sense of how my software behaved. Debian isn't for everyone, and I'm not saying you should uninstall Windows tomorrow. But for people who value stability, transparency, and customization, it's an excellent place to learn and grow. If you're curious but cautious, try Debian in a VM or on a spare drive for a month, and test your key hardware and games first. If you're thinking of trying it, here are three quick, practical tips from my month. 1. Back up everything before the first boot. 2. Learn the three apt commands. Update, upgrade, install. And keep a search query for ProtonDB for any game you care about. 3. Be ready to Google a driver package name the community docs and Debian's package repos usually have what you need. In the end, Debian taught me something more valuable than a new OS. It changed how I think about my tools. Moving away from muscle memory taught me to choose the right tool for the job rather than the familiar one. Will I stay on Debian forever? Maybe not. There's a whole ecosystem of distros and each has its strengths. But this month proved that the leap from Windows to Linux is less a leap into the unknown and more an invitation to control your digital life. If you're curious, give it a month. You might be surprised which side of the switch you end up on. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for daily videos. Bye.